Hi guys, here's your video on 4.7 inverse trig functions. So after you are done watching the video, you should be able to find the inverse of trig functions. So inverse functions are when you switch x and y. So there's two different ways to denote an inverse trig function. You can use arc or you can use the actual symbol for the inverse. So for example, um, the definition uses a lot of arc sine, arc cosine, and arc uh, tangent, but you can also write it like this with the little negative one. So you'll see it written both ways. Arc sine of x is the same thing as inverse sine of x. Arc cosine of x is the same thing as inverse cosine of x. And arc tangent of x is the same thing as inverse tangent of x. So just two different ways to write it. So inverse comes from switching x's and y's. So if you were to take your sine graph and literally switch all of your x coordinates and y coordinates, what would happen is you would have this curve in black, but it would also continue because trig functions are periodic. Now for a graph to be a function, it has to pass the vertical line test. But if you'll notice with what I drew in blue, it doesn't pass the vertical line test. So what we do with inverse trig functions is we only look at certain portions of it, which is why you'll see this curve only goes from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. So if you'll look at your domain for the inverse sine, your x-coordinates for the inverse have to be between negative 1 and 1. And that's because your y-coordinates of sine are in between negative 1 and 1. And inverses, you switch your x's and y's. Your range for the inverse trig function has to be between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. So when you're solving for an inverse trig function, what you're looking for is you're looking for an angle measurement. And for sine, that angle measurement is in between these two quadrants where this is negative pi over 2 and this is pi over 2. Cosine, your domain is still between negative 1 and 1 because uh, when you graph a cosine function, the y's only go from negative 1 to 1. But your angle for your range goes from 0 to pi. So when we're actually solving for an inverse cosine, the angle measurement that you're solving for is in those two quadrants, going from 0 to pi. And then tangent, so tangent, your domain is negative infinity to infinity, because if you recall with your graphs of tangent, they just go on forever and ever and ever with your y-axis. But your range goes from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. So once we actually start solving for inverse tangent, the angle measurements that we're looking at are these from these two quadrants, negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. So if you'll notice, both sine and tangent have the same values for the range, and then cosine goes from 0 to pi. So we're going to take that into consideration as we start to actually solve some problems. Okay, so I'm looking for arc sine of 3 pi over 2. So again, whenever you're solving for an inverse, you're looking for the angle measurement. So I'm trying to find what angle would give me sine. I'm trying to find when I take sine of what angle gives me um, root 3 over 2. So I'm going to go ahead and draw this out. Um, root 3 over 2 is positive. So that puts me in that first quadrant. So I'm trying to solve for this angle. Now if you think back to when we were doing the hand trick and finding exact values of trig functions, I'm trying to find when my y coordinate is root 3 over 2. So if I look at my left hand, my y coordinate is root 3 over 2 when my angle measurement is pi over 3. So that makes um, arc sine of root 3 over 2 being pi over 3. 
Now if you wanted to, you can check this in the calculator. I'm going to, since all of these angles are in radians, I'm going to change my calculator mode to radian mode. And I'm going to do inverse sine, so I'm going to hit second sine and type in root 3 over 2. It's going to give you a decimal, but I'm going to check to see if that decimal is the same thing as pi over 3, which it is. Um, for inverse cosine of 2. So inverse cosine of 2, I'm trying to find when I take cosine of what angle gives me a value of 2. But if we go back to the last slide, the domain of inverse sine and cosine have to be between negative 1 and 1. So that means my inputs have to be between negative 1 and 1. So if I go back to this, 2 is most definitely not in between negative 1 and 1, so that means the inverse cosine of 2 does not exist. And if you were to try to put that in the calculator, inverse cosine of 2, it would give you an error. Alright, so arc cosine of negative root 2 over 2. So again, I'm trying to find an angle. When I take cosine of that angle, it gives me negative root 2 over 2. Cosine is my x-coordinate, and I'm only looking at these two quadrants for cosine. So cosine is negative in this quadrant right here. So I'm trying to find this angle measurement that would give me a negative root 2 over 2 when I take cosine of it. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to find um, the angle measurement using my left hand, and what that gives me is my reference angle. So my x-coordinate has to be root 2 over 2. So if I look at my left hand, my x-coordinate is root 2 over 2, and my angle is pi over 4, because that's putting down your middle finger. So my reference angle is pi over 4. Now what I'm actually solving for is the entire angle, so I am looking for this piece again. So if I know that this piece is pi over 4, I can take pi minus pi over 4, and that will give me the other angle, which is 3 pi over 4. And I can check this. I can do inverse cosine of negative root 2 over 2. That gives me 2.356, and I'm going to check to see if 3 pi divided by 4 when I plug it in is the same decimal, which it is. Tangent, I'm looking at these two quadrants. So if I look at this value, tangent is positive, so that means that angle that we're looking for is in this first quadrant. Now tangent is y over x, so when I look at my hand for my hand trick, I need to figure out when, when I take y divided by x, would give me root 3 over 3. Now root 3 over 3 comes from changing a radical. So I'm actually going to change this to 1 over root 3, because that's what we were changing to get to root 3 over 3 when we were solving for exact values of trig functions. So I need to figure out what angle, when I take my y-coordinate and divide it by my x-coordinate, it's going to give me 1 over root 3. And then that angle is pi over 6. Because my ordered pair at pi over 6 is root 3 over 2, comma 1 half. So if I take my y-coordinate divided by my x-coordinate, that's 1 half divided by root 3 over 2. 2's cancel, so that's 1 over root 3. So that means the arctangent of root 3 over 3 is equal to pi over 6. And I can check that in the calculator. So inverse tangent of root 3 divided by 3 gives me 0.523. Um, and I'm going to check to see if that's the same thing as pi over 6 which it is. Okay, last thing we're looking at is arc sine of negative root 2 over 2. So again, arc sine only exists in these two quadrants. So sine is my y-coordinate, and my y-coordinate is negative when I'm choosing between these two quadrants at this angle over here. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to find the reference angle that when I take sine of is going to give me a negative root 2 over 2. So since I'm looking at my reference angle, I'm actually going to look for the positive root 2 over 2. So sine of 45 degrees, or pi over 4, is going to give you a positive root 2 over 2 because my y coordinate at pi over 4 is root 2 over 2. So this reference angle is pi over 4. Now keep in mind with inverse sine, what you're looking for with your angle measurements, they have to range from negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2. So if this reference angle is pi over 4, and my angle has to be between negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2, that makes this negative pi over 4. So you're just using the negative angle instead of the positive angle. And if I were to check it, so inverse sine of negative root 2 over 2, that gives me negative 0.785, so negative pi divided by 4 is negative 0.785, so it works. Okay, um, the second example is evaluating a composition. For this one, it is very, very helpful to draw a triangle. So anytime I'm solving for, an, for the inverse of something, I'm actually solving for an angle. So I'm just going to look at the inside function first. So I'm going to look at this. So inverse sine of 8 seventeenths gives me some angle. And in the previous examples, we were finding the exact angles using the hand trick since they were on the unit circle. But we don't have a point on the unit circle that uses 8 seventeenths. So what we can do instead is we can draw a triangle. So 8 seventeenths is positive, and sine is positive in the first quadrant. So sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So my opposite side is 8, hypotenuse is 17. I can use the Pythagorean theorem to solve for the third side. So 17 squared minus 8 squared, square root, and it gives me 15. So this side is 15. So here's the actual angle, which we don't care about the measure of the angle. And the reason why we don't really care about the measure of the angle is because we're going to take cosine of that angle. And since I have that triangle drawn, Cosine of theta is adjacent over hypotenuse, which is 15 seventeenths. And there is your answer. Now you can check these by plugging it in. So I'm going to do cosine of inverse sine of 8 seventeenths. Gives me 0.882. And then if I take 15 divided by 17, that is uh, 0.882. So there's your answer. For letter B, I'm going to do the same thing. Anytime I'm solving for an inverse, I'm solving for an angle. So when I take inverse tangent of 7 fourths, that gives me some angle. Tangent is positive in the first quadrant. Tangent is opposite over adjacent, so my opposite side is 7, adjacent side is 4. I can use the Pythagorean theorem to solve for my hypotenuse, which is going to be the square root of 65. We'll go ahead and just leave it as a radical. And here's my theta. Now what I want to do is I want to take secant of theta. Well, secant matches up with cosine. And cosine is your adjacent over hypotenuse, which makes secant hypotenuse over adjacent. So my hypotenuse is the square root of 65, and my adjacent side is 4. So that means secant of tangent, of inverse tangent of 7 fourths, is root 65 over 4. And if I do want to check this one and plug it into the calculator, you don't actually have a secant button, but you do have a cosine button. So here's what I'm typing into the calculator right now. 1 over cosine of inverse tangent of 7 fourths. So I have 1 over cosine of inverse tangent of 7 fourths which gives me 2.01556, 
So I want to check to see that the square root of 65 divided by 4 is that same decimal, which it is. All right, so that concludes your notes for section. Forgot what section this was again. Uh, 4.7.